Hello, my name's Gary Peverell from Inspiring Adventure and I thought I'd just have a little chat about different boat setups um, and just what I do to my boats here um, and then the plan is to do a few extra videos on stuff that's quite useful. So to start off with, I've got these two boats here. This is a uh, Venture Affon, which is a recent purchase for me. Um, and then my normal boat that I paddle is in a Swift Prospector, and that is a 16, uh, that's a sport version. So both boats are, are quite different in the way that they handle. Um, but what I've done is I've set them up very similar. Um, so you can see what I've done. And obviously at the moment you might be at home sorting your boats out and drilling and doing stuff. So I thought I'd just show you what I do. Um, so if you just come out, I'm going to show you what I've done to the boat here. So basically with this boat, um, it already comes laced down the sides here, which is slightly different to the other ones because they normally need pre-drilling. Pre so what I've done here is I've added in some extra ropes here for the airbags. I've put in a large airbag at the front here, so this, this boat predominantly is probably going to be a white water boat, so I've put as much airbags in it as I can. Um, and I've added this extra strap across the middle here, which is glued down to the bottom, that basically holds it in. Because obviously it's quite a lot of force on the boats if they end up filling up with water. So the other things I've put into this boat, um, I've added a, a sailing rig in there, which has got a clamp here, which is an old uh, kneeling thwart, which I've hold, got a hole in, two bits, clamps together with two bolts, which you can see in a sec. And then there's a nice rubber um, mast foot that the pole sits into, which I've got from Endless River. So the other bits and bobs I've added into the boats, all the way down the side here is there's bungee, and that bungee is designed to basically hook the paddles in and any poles that I put into the boat. Um, and then I've added extra bits of bungee in here if I need to put something on the front seat. And then with this area here, obviously got a, a kneeling thwart and a middle thwart. The kneeling thwart that I've added in, um, if you just come a bit closer, is one that I built myself. So it's a little bit wider than your standard one. Um, so I just find that a little bit more comfortable. And then this was already in the boat already. Just for your information, the, the middle of the boat is a pretty much about there. Um, and when I first bought the boat, these were slightly different places. So I had to refit this um, and put this in. And I've moved this forwards a bit um, and moved this forwards as well. So I'm basically closer to the midpoint of the boat. When I first paddled it, I found it was really, really stern heavy. Um, so I've literally just added that in and moved it forwards as much as I can. Um, something that I tried to work out is, is how close can you put your kneeling thwart to your mid thwart here. Um, and just for a bit of information, um, if this is the middle of the boat here, um, the distance between here and here is about 34, 34 centimetres. So I wanted to get it really close, but obviously if you get too close it makes it tricky to get out of. Um, and too far back obviously makes the boat really stern heavy when you're paddling it. So on this one we're on about 34 centimetres. And as I said the midpoint is about there. So I've obviously added a mat in as well and I generally use Evo stick um, to put both sides, leave it for a few hours and then stick it all together. Um, and that just makes it more comfortable to, to kneel on. And then I've moved the seat configuration. The back seat was really close up here. So I've moved that further back now. Um, so that I've actually got a space to paddle it if I'm paddling downwind at the back of the boat. So that's moved back a little bit. And then a smaller airbag at the back just because of the space. And then down at this end, I've got things like uh, my painters and a line here for my swim line, which is connected onto the painter at the back here. And I've redone the line that's gone through the boat. And basically all the lines that I've got here are the same as throw bags, so they can take that extra sort of weight, which is roughly about a tonne. So all my painters and all my boats, all the lines that are drilled through the boat or any lines that are attached to a throw line as a swim, swim line um, are all weight tested and are all strong. So this is obviously climbing tape here. And I've tried to make sure as much as possible that the loop at the end is as small as I can get it. There's no large knots on any of the things here and the taping line is as, as clean as possible so there's no loops tied together. So. Just on this boat here, just as a, a note as well, because of the airbag set up here, because the airbag is so close to the kneeling thwart, I've added a bit of um, basically roll mat, which I've just taped up, just to protect the ends, which kind of go over here. And that just means when I blow the airbag up a little bit tighter, it, it stays in place and it doesn't push against the airbag in the first set. So that's pretty much my setup for the Afon. Something that I've done as well as I've drilled a hole in each end. So I find that when the boats fill up with water, it's quite tricky to get the water out. So by drilling the hole, it allows the boats to go upside down and basically drain out the end, which just drains them out quicker. So that's cool. So that's the boat there. 
The other boat that I use is the uh, Swift Prospector, as I said, and this is my normal sort of boat for open water, white water trips and expeditions. So I've got a slightly bigger boat here, and this one's 16 foot, so it can go tandem as well, and it carries loads of kit, and there's plenty of room to maneuver around for things like open water. So, starting at this end, uh, just a couple of sort of notes, is that all the painters I have in the boat are all the length of the boat, so this one's pretty much just ooh, just over 16 foot, um, and again, weight tested. And I normally tie it on with a bowline on the end here, um, and that's just tied on, so I can easily take it off, and it's dead easy to move and change it for other stuff. But I generally leave the painters on on the boat, and when I'm paddling, I normally coil them up. And depending on what I'm doing, I'll either put them just underneath the lacing here, or I'll actually tuck them further away down the side of the airbag so that they can't stick out at all and get caught in bushes or anything. So with this airbag here, I put a little bungee system on that allows me to pull that airbag a bit further forwards and let some air out, which allows me to use this boat more as a tandem boat. Um, but the majority of the time it is paddled solo, so I allow that to come out. Some bits and bobs I've got in here, I've got some tubes to protect the airbags which my uh, poles are in and as you can see this has got bits of bungee down the side as well which basically keep it in place. Um, the other bits and bobs I've got, uh, down here I've got my baler and I've tied that on with a hireman's hitch and I've got a throw bag there that's just clicked on as well. Um, and they stay underneath the seat so that if I was to turn the boat upside down stuff wouldn't fall out of it. Um, so that's just clicked on there out of the way. Um, and then here I've got a bum bag with extra bits and bobs in. Um, things like gooey thongs, which I'll explain later, um, and bits of foam and stuff just to help protect poles on rafting setups and things. So again, like the other boat, I've got a sailing thwart, which I've just built. This one has a slightly looser fit, so I've cut this slightly, um, just so the poles slide in a little bit easier. So a pole here. And I've done... I've done this, I haven't swapped it over to the rubber one, purely because uh, it still works quite well. And all I do is I just slide the pole in there and I've got a bit of Velcro that goes around that bit so it stays nice and tight. But if you don't do that, it's really hard to get it in. So when this breaks off a bit, I'll swap it for the rubber mounted one, which is on the Afon. But it works pretty well at the moment. The idea is you can take that off, so if you have it tandem, it doesn't need to be there. Um, a lot of the boats as well have got these loops in. And these loops are quite useful, not necessarily just for clipping bits of kit in, because sometimes that gets in the way. It's more about lashing kit in for longer trips. So if I had two uh, big dry bags, I might be tempted to have them side by side. But quite often I'll have one up there and one there, and it just helps me to lash them in tighter. Um, and I'll talk about how I do that in a second. In terms of the rest of the boat, um, I've got some really thick foam in this one. Uh, which I've glued in again with Evo stick. And just for your information, the midpoint on this boat is, is pretty much here as well. And then I've brought the kneeling thwart on this, again, one that I've made myself. Uh, and that is about 36 centimetres from that point to that point. So again, it's slightly wider than that one, but this still works pretty well for me and I wouldn't want it much closer, to be honest. And then just for a bit of information, I've got two jamming cleats here. Um, so when I set my solo sail up, um, the, the, basically the, the main sheet from that clips into there onto that side depending on which way I'm going. Um, and then for the rest of the boat, I've got a nice big space here at the back that I can sit out, put my legs out. Again, it's got all the bungee down the side. And then I put bungee on the seats here because sometimes I often put stuff underneath the seat like a big pelly case with a camera or an extra throw line. Um, I'll stick that underneath there. And then at the back of the boat, I basically got my painter again, the same same length as the other one. And then my swim line, um, I've got a 20 meter line again, it's weight tested. I just literally have the end poking out there with a bit of tape on, and do that. I pull that out, pull that out, and then this is attached with a screw gate carabiner, um, a HMS style, and then again a bit of tape sling there. So the idea is that should come off relatively easy if I have to take a swim and use it as a swim line. So just to sort of note with the, with the painter here is that I've left a bit of a tail on the end and the reason why I've done that is basically so people, if I've got a swimmer at the back of the boat, they can hold on to that bit of rope there and it doesn't affect anything else. Um, they can sometimes hold on to the side, but I just find having that extra tail just makes it a little bit easier. So one of the things I just thought I'd just show you is just kind of how I tie that on. So I'm just going to undo that now. Um, and there's lots of different ways of tying knots, but the way I tend to tie my bowlines is I'll just go through somewhere, 
and then the line that is the longest part I'll just put a knot in with a loop and that loop bit is the line that goes towards the end and then with here I just poke that through and then I can adjust however much rope I want dangling down so I want that much and then I pull the bowline tight and then I flick it over pull it tight and then that's how I set the distance on that so that's a bit too small at the moment so I'm just going to redo that so I'm just to set that make a loop pull the end through like so adjust the size pull it tight flick it over and if you think these need to stay on for a while then obviously you could put a couple of knots in there as well if you felt like you needed to just like an overhand stopper knot up against the bowline and that sorts that out as well the reason why i have these weight tested is for things if uh, not just using it as a painter to tie boats together or to, to line with or anything like that i tend to use it as an anchor point so for example if my boat was to get pinned i might run this underneath the seat and then underneath another part of the seat do the bowline same again through, put tight and then what that allows me to do then it allows me to have multiple anchors on the end of the boat so if the boat was to get pinned it's not just pulling from this point here it's pulling from two other points as well um, and the throw line to be attached to that if you felt like it needed to be like so and the thing with this is it can adjust and it can re sort of self equalize as well just to pull the boat off a rock or anything like that if that is able if you needed to do so and again you can only really do that if you can trust the strength of the, the lines that you've got here so that's that so just going back to the rest of the boat just tying kit in just leave that there for the moment just come and have a bit of a look at the bag here um, and tying kit in the boats is always one of those ones that's um People have different views on so I thought I'd just go through this so basically with my rucksack dry bag and this is a lot easier if you have a dry bag with straps because then you've got attachment points to it but basically um, with my bag I'll either literally put it in the boat and leave it be so if I was to capsize it might stay in there but it would probably float off so I need to go and grab it but there's no way of that getting stuck then on anything or I'll use uh, my painter and I'll tie it in and the way I tend to tie stuff in and you can do this either quick release or not quick release but you need to know the pros and cons for each if i tie this in now i've just crossed the ropes over um, and if i just go through this end here that makes a clove hitch so that isn't a quick release knot and the only way you're going to quick release that is to get a knife on it or to feed it out um, so that's just something to bear in mind the other option you've got if you put the bits of rope over each other so you create that cross get a bite of rope put it underneath so make sure it's all nice and tight then this is a quick release knot so you can pull that through and then the knot will have to unwind which is great but it does take a little bit of time to come undone or you could use a highway mount hitch which I just use this I've got a short end and a long end here I put a bite of rope underneath I get the long end put a loop through I get a short end put a loop through and then I pull the long end tight make sure it's all nice and tight with each other try not to make too much of a big loop here and what that allows you to do that loop will stay tight on the long end but the short end will quick release off and it comes off super quick so I've got a couple of options there that I can use I'm just going to use a highman's hitch for this for the moment so do the long end the short end pull it tight and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach um, around the straps and through the grab handle on here I'm going to do my bowline, so I do the one that's on a little bite like that, pull it tight, always leave about that much tail on it, and the idea with that is that my kit bag then, if I was to capsize, would float away about that much, so what that allows you to do is curl the boat or X rescue the boat, uh, and then you can just pull the kit back in. What is an advantage with this is you could move your kit to the front, or to the middle, or to the back, and it's still connected to the boat. One thing that I have found really useful is if I have my kit bag right next to the knot and I tie an overhand knot on it and you could do this on the bite if you wanted to the idea is it gives you a bit of a counterweight there we go so then if you go to the other side you can climb in and that bag stops the boat from tipping over and basically filling up as much so if you feel like you need to self-rescue and get back in the boat this way if you do that option it just means that the bag counterweights it which is quite handy 
So I tend to use this on an open water configuration. So if you don't want to do that way, the other option that I tend to use is a, a tram line system. So I've tied it on with a Hyman's hitch there, and that's okay. I literally then run the line through the straps, which I've made sure are nice and tight to start off with. I then run it through my seat and it could go over or under the seat. It doesn't matter too much which way you do it. I make sure that goes tight, that goes tight, that goes tight, and then it goes underneath the straps here. There we go. And then to tie it off, now the thing with this is with a high woman's hitch, it's quite tricky to get everything tight. So you're better off doing it with a clove hitch on the bite. So you can pull it in through the end there and that still keeps things relatively tight. And then quick release, you can pull it off like that. Sometimes I will literally half hitch it on. So I literally, not on the bite, just literally a half hitch like so. But then obviously that isn't quick release. Again, if I need to quick release it, it's, it's a cut, or I could quick release it from that end. But if you don't want it to come undone, half hitches are probably the best recommendation. The good thing about half hitches is that you can pretty much, um, if you need to hold on to something else, you can kind of do it with one hand, which is quite good if you need to hold a couple of bikes together. So the idea with this system is that your bag can come nice and close to you, so you're quite well weighted at the midpoint. Um, so I normally kind of paddle like this. So my kit bag's there, all the weight in the boat is as close to the middle as I can get it, so the boat's manoeuvrable. If I feel like I need to do any backwards work, I will push the bag forwards um, to weight the front end a little bit, and then I can do any reverse stuff. Or if I was gonna paddle up wind, I might do that with it. Um, and the idea is that the bag can't come out because it's trapped in. Obviously it has to go through both straps there. And the more that's in the bag, the, the better it works. Um, the key thing with that is that if you need to bring someone into your boat, you've obviously got areas of line that people can put their hands and stuff in. Um, you've got to bear in mind if you're going to move forwards in your boat, that's going to get in your way a little bit. So you just have to be aware of that. Um, if I tend to put someone in my boat, I tend to put them in behind me just because there's no areas that are going to get caught. They're not going to get caught and stuff. And what I find with this, so I have done this before where I want my stuff completely solid in the boat. Um, and luckily, I've got a loop there and a loop there and I'll just clip a carabiner out to the side and that pretty much stops the whole thing from moving. Um, so that's quite useful as well. But the reason I like this system is because I could put one kit bag in there as well and I could add another kit bag the same size and style and they both stay put and they don't fall out of the boat. One of the biggest issues with, with boats is that stuff tends to get caught up on rescues. So I would do a little sort of test that if you turn your boat completely upside down and shook it, what is actually going to fall out of it and what is going to get caught if you needed to slide it across another boat or you needed to curl it. So um, with the boats I tend to go for this sort of setup here where it's all nice and close, there's stuff that isn't going to fall out and get in the way and I've tried to keep the boat as clean as I possibly can. Okay, if you've got any other suggestions or recommendations please please add them in. Thank you.